So therefore, let's see our next part, the source net. Under the source net, we basically has the uh, address pool mode. So we have uh, address pool mode number one and number two. The uh, address pool mode one is talking about we translating the IP without the port translations. So NAT basically can translate both IP and port numbers, but uh, it, we can actually choose either one when we actually use. Example over here that you can see is that if let's say we have a internal host, yes, with the source address of 192.168.0.11, and basically this host trying to actually reach to a destination address of 1.1.1.1. So in address pool mode, if we are going to actually get uh, addresses from the pool, now assuming that these are the addresses from the pool. So basically for every user, when they try to go to the uh, untrust boundary or untrust network, basically they are going to be translated. Okay, so when they actually trans translated, they actually need to use um, the addresses from the pool. So in this case, example, uh, the source address 9.9.9.9 .9 .9 is part of the uh, pool. Okay, then um, in this case, basically, uh, address pool mode without port translation is going to perform one to one address translation, which means one private to one public, and this doesn't involve any port number. So if let's say um, the pool is running out of uh, public IP to be translated for internal host, then any subsequent internal host that try to access to the uh, uh, outer parts of network or the public networks, then they are not able to be translated. Hence, they are not going to uh, able to communicate with the uh, public networks outside there. Next, we see the address pool mode, but this time is with the port. Okay, so port address translation is uh, applied on this case. So uh, what we can see over here is that we have a trust PC, a trust user that is 192.168.0.11. So this particular user will have a source port number. Now this source port number could be a random port number. Then um, this particular user is going into a destination address of 1.1.1. So whenever the address pool mode with port translation is configured on our firewall, the translation itself will convert not only the uh, source IP address from the pool, but also as well as the uh, source port number will be translated. So which means the translation is address to address, source port to source port the destination never changed. So uh, with this, we can actually implement a different port number okay, to different hosts, and it could be a many to one address translations. Okay, so this is what you can see. Next, we have the uh, Easy IP, the most common method that we use nowadays that we use daily. So for the easy IP or outbound interface address mode, this basically is the idea of using the public IP of the uh, outbound interface of our firewall. So this also involves port address translation. Now you can see that the trusted host user is actually using 192.166.0.11. So when it's translated, basically uh, they are actually going to, to bring a uh, port number as well. So when they actually translated into the uh, public network, they are going to obtain once another source address and with a new uh, random port number as well, as to indicate they are actually coming from different internet hosts. The destination address never changed. Okay, it's just that uh, easy IP we actually have the uh, port address translation. So what's the difference between the easy IP 
as well as to the address pool mode with the port address translation. For the address pool mode, basically the public IP address are the, stat are the static public IP address that is already granted to hosting provider. So the internet user can only use the address within the pool range. But for easy IP, regardless how many internet users that you have, all of them are going to be translated into single public IP. And this public IP can be dynamic. Uh, but anyhow, this IP address will be part of the uh, uh, outbound interface IP. Okay, so this is pretty much the same. The uh, port address translations is supplied. Okay, then next we see the uh, Net ALG, or we call it as Network Address Translations Application Level Gateway. So uh, this particular Net ALG is a feature that we need to enable by ourselves in Huawei Firewall. So um, this particular uh, AL Network Applications, sorry, Network uh, network address translations application level gateway is a kind of proxy that you actually use for certain applications and when they actually perform the translation it will actually translate the addresses as well as the port number that carry by the application layer of data okay so what you can see over here is actually uh, as we can see, the uh, example of the uh, net application label gateway in your FTP active mode. Now, firstly, we have our uh, trusted host, which is 192.168.1.2 in the private network. And the uh, net ALG is enabled on the firewall. And we are trying to access the uh, FTP server of uh, IP 8.8.8.1. So, uh, as mentioned previously, that in order for us to establish uh, FTP, where FTP is a multi-channel protocol, so therefore, firstly, we need to set up the uh, control connections. So, the control connections will be the uh, three-way handshake, TCP three-way handshakes between the host and the FTP server. So, once the TCP three-way handshakes done successfully, then the host will need to send a port packet. Okay, so this is what you normally will see in FTP active mode. So the host is actually carrying 192.168.1.2 as a source IP and with the source port number of 1084 example. Then uh, when it's sent to the firewall that is actually enabled with the uh, uh, ALG. So this particular uh, firewall will translate the private address and the port number in your packet to the public address and port number. So in this case, it will be our 8.8.8.11 as well as the 12487 that is for the port number. Then this uh, payload of the packet will be sent to the FTP server. FTP server need to actually initiate a data connections. Okay, so FTP server initiate data connection because this is active mode. So in active mode, FTP server will send or build up this particular data channel to the host. So what you can see over here is that uh, this FTP server is using 8.8.8.1 with the port number 3004. Uh, this is uh, coming from the uh, FTP server and send it to the uh, 8.8.8.11.124.87 that is our host. So when this particular data connection traffic go into our um, net ALG firewall, then our net ALG firewall will then initiate a data connections to our host, which is originated from the uh, 192.168.1.2 uh, with the uh, port number 1084. Then only uh, our data channel can be established 
and we'll be able to send data traffic across the uh, file.